average weight of 19 year old women in America is 148.6 pounds with a standard deviation of 23.9 pounds. What is the minimum percentage of 19 year old women who weigh between 96 and 201.2 pounds? What is the maximum percentage of women who weigh more than 201.2 pounds? So when I read this problem, the thing that um, jumps out at me first is this phrase, what is the minimum percentage? That's a phrase that's used in conjunction with Chebyshev's rule, because this formula or this rule gives you essentially the minimum percentage that will lie within an interval. And I see that they gave us two numbers here, and so those two numbers are probably an interval of the form that's given here. What we have to do is to check to see if that's in fact correct. So our first step is going to be, hey, let's find out if this interval is symmetric around the mean. If it is, then we should be able to use Chebyshev's rule to answer the question, what's the minimum percentage of data that's in between these two numbers? So what do I mean when I say symmetric about the mean? Well, let's put those two numbers on a number line, 96 and 201.2. So if I put 96 here and 201.2 here, right? And so imagine this is on a number line. 96 would be on the left because it's smaller. Where's the mean that they gave us? They told us the mean was 148.6. So that would be like in the middle somewhere, right? The question is, is it exactly in the middle? In other words, is there equal distance from here to here as there is from here to here? And if there is, let's figure it out. So let's find out. What we're gonna do is simply take our calculator and we're gonna take the 148.6 and we're gonna subtract off that 96 that they gave us. And when we do that, we get 52.6, 52.6. So that means the distance from here to here is 52.6. The question is, what happens if I add that 52.6 distance to 148.6? Will it give me 201.2? Let's find out. If I add to that the mean 148.6, when I do that, I get 201.2. I get the precise value that's on the right-hand side. And what this shows me is that this number, the mean, is right in the middle of this interval of values they gave me. And that's what I'm looking for in the problem. Okay, so once we have that, then our next step is going to be able to figure out what the k is. Because you see the way they created our interval is they did the mean plus k standard deviations. I know what the standard deviation is, it's 23.9 pounds, but I don't know what k is. So let's try to figure that out by using a formula. The formula is k equals 2 upper limit minus the mean over the standard deviation. So the upper limit here in the problem is the 201.2. That's the higher number in the interval they gave us, right? That's why I've called it the upper limit. Then I'm going to subtract off the mean. The mean is 148.6. And I will divide all that by the standard deviation they gave us in the problem, which is 23.9. Okay, so let's see what we get when we do that. So 201.2 minus 148.6. I do that, and of course I get the 52.6 that we found earlier, and I'm going to divide it by 23.9. And we'll get the answer 2.2008, etc. right? I'm going to approximate that as 2.2001, or 0 2.201. That should be good enough and should work fine in our formula. You could, of course, use the entire k value without rounding it whatsoever. And that's probably what I will do actually in my calculator. Just for the purpose of writing it down, I wanted to keep it shorter. But I will probably use the full number in my calculator for the next step. All right, so what is that next step? That next step is going to take that k that we just found and plug it into our formula for Chebyshev's theorem. See, the theorem says that at least this proportion of data will be inside the interval, or at least this percent of the data will be inside the interval if you multiply by 100% at the end. So let's do that then. We're going to take that formula, 1 minus 1 over k squared. And then we're going to multiply it afterwards by 100% just to convert it into a percentage. So that's pretty straightforward. All these are just numbers except for our k, which we already have. We're going to plug it in there and see what we get. So I'm going to do 1 minus 1 divided by the 2.201, right? But I have that number still in my calculator, so I'm going to hit second answer and square it. So I'm just taking the number I had before and squaring it. All right, so when I do that in my calculator, 1 minus that number, I get 0.7935, et cetera, right? 
0.7935, so on and so forth. So the answer is approximately, after multiplying by 100%, which just moves that decimal place over two places, 79.35%. So, you know, roughly 79 if you want to keep it to whole percentages, right? So our final part of this problem is to say, hey, at least, right? Because that's the terminology used in the formula, right? It says that at least this percent of the data will lie inside the interval, right? So at least 79% will lie inside the interval. Okay, so that's a large number, right? A large number. Close to 80% of the women who are 19 years old in America will weigh between 96 and 201.2 pounds. And when I say close to 80, I really mean to say that that's the minimum percentage, right? So when it says at least, it means that it could be higher, right? It could be 100% of the women in that, in that span, or it could be 95% or 90%. It could be any number this size or higher, right? So it could be 79% or more inside the interval. Now, that leads us to our next question. Our next question that they ask us is, what's the maximum percentage of women who will weigh more than 201.2 pounds? Let's try to think about this. We had this interval above and we say, hey, look, at least, right? At least 79% is in here. That's what we said. At least 79% is inside that space. That brings us to the question, what could possibly be outside of the interval then? You know, if at least 79% is there, at most, what could be outside? And your answer is simply going to be to take this number from 100%. So if you do 100% minus 79%, of course you get 21%, right? And that number, 21% that you find, is going to give you the answer to our second part of the question. The maximum percentage of women that will weigh more than 201.2 pounds is 21%. That's the absolute maximum. So in other words, you will say down here that at most, 21% is above 201.2 pounds. And how do I know that's true? Well, because Chebyshev's theorem says that no less than this percentage that we found will be inside the interval. So that means that the most that could be outside is what's left over from 100. But you might be thinking, well, shouldn't I take half of 21% since we're only talking about the amount that would be above 201.2? Well, that would be a mistake, actually, because that would assume that the amount that's not inside the interval is evenly divided into both halves, right? Below and above. But that isn't actually true. In Chebyshev's theorem, we have no assumption of symmetry. That means we really don't know if there is indeed 21% left outside. And remember, that's a net most, so there could be no one outside of that interval. There could be 10% outside the interval or whatever, right? But regardless of whatever number is outside that interval, let's say hypothetically that you know it was in fact 21% outside the interval, you don't know if the 21% is above 201.2, below 96, some above, some below, evenly split. We don't know that. So all we can say is that, hey, the maximum that could be above this number is 21% because that's the maximum that could be outside the interval and the amount that's outside the interval could really be anywhere outside the interval. So it is at least possible that it could be all above 201.2 pounds. Okay, so those are your two basic applications of Chebyshev's theorem. Those are essentially the two ways to use it. You can talk about what percent is inside of an interval, which is what we did in the first part of the problem, or you can talk about what percent is outside a given interval, and that's what we did in the second part of the problem. Pay attention to the fact that when we talk about what's inside the interval, we use the phrase at least. If we're talking about what amount is outside the interval, we use the phrase at most, and we don't take the percent that comes from the formula directly, we take 100% minus the number that we got from the formula to talk about what's outside the interval. And that's basically because the formula is designed to give us the amount of data inside an interval. So if you want to use it to talk about what's outside an interval, you're going to have to do a little arithmetic to come up with a number that's appropriate for that question. All right, and that's it.